Hi everyone, in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a bulk blur to your videos and create a soft focus pull using the camera lens blur effect. So I got this clip open, and this is a perfect example with some nice lights, and it's night time, so there's a good contrast. So, in order to get to this effect, let's head over to the effects panel and search for one called Camera Lens Blur. You should find it in the Blur and Sharpen folder. So let's click and drag this effect onto our clip layer, and now we have a couple options to play around with. So this effect is really similar to the Lens Blur if you've ever played around with it in Photoshop. It basically allows you to create some realistic looking bulk blur out of your flat images that didn't actually have it done in Q2. Hey highs. Hi everyone, in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a bulk blur to your videos and create a soft focus pull using the camera lens blur effect. So I got this clip open, and this is a perfect example with some nice lights, and it's night time, so there's a good contrast. So, in order to get to this effect, let's head over to the effects panel and search for one called camera lens blur. You should find it in the blur and sharpen folder. So let's click and drag this effect onto our clip layer, and now we have a couple options to play around with. So this effect is really similar to the lens blur if you've ever played around with it in Photoshop. It basically allows you to create some realistic looking bulk blur out of your flat images that didn't actually have it done in camera. So one tip before we start is this effect can be a little bit heavy to preview process. So if we go to our composition window, we can lower the quality from full to something like a third or a quarter, and it'll be much faster for us to work, and it won't look too different. So you can see we have a few options on the camera lens blur. The blur radius is the main option, so how much blur do you want? Here's none, and you can see it slowly pulls out to a somewhat realistic looking bulk blur. So a few other options you have are to determine the iris properties, which is kind of like the shape of the lens. Or the shape of the blur. So this is a hexagon you can see. It's got six sides. Or you could do things like a triangle or a square, and there's different interesting ones you could use. But you also have the option to turn the roundness up on any of these. So if you turn the roundness all the way up to 100%, you get a perfect circle or oval. Next, you have the aspect ratio, which is going to make things spread out wider or closer together. I'll just keep that at 1 by default, and then you have the rotation. So when you're working with a perfect circle, you won't be able to tell any rotation, but let's say you're working with a square or triangle, you could rotate what angle you want it to be bulk blurred and see what's happening. Now the diffraction fringe is how much brightness do you want to collect around the fringes or edges of these circles. So if we boost it up, you might be able to tell what's happening is these rings are starting to get a little bit of that glow at the edge, which can replicate what happens in certain lenses. So you can play around with that to your taste as well. And the blur map, we're not going to use in this case. It allows you to use another layer in the composition that's different from this one to determine what to blur. So we're going to skip that because we just want to blur the actual layer. And the highlights is another way that you can use to create some glowing in some of the brighter areas. So the lower the threshold is, the more areas will be considered to be affected, starting from brightest to darkest, and then you can increase the gain on just those areas. So you can see what happens when I lower the threshold, more things get considered. Or when I increase it, the max is 255, less things get considered. And you can adjust basically the brightness and saturation of just those areas, which can help create a bit of a brighter glow on some of the bokeh, but you can play around with that as well. Next, I like to check repeat edge pixels pretty much always, because if you're blurring it anything over than just a little bit, you'll notice that you lose some of that data around the edges. So repeat edge pixels kind of just like gets that back. And there you can see we've created a pretty realistic looking bulk blur out of this normal carousel nighttime image. However, we can use a couple keyframes to replicate a smooth focus blur which is a good way to introduce a clip or ease in and out of a clip. So, let's go to the beginning of the clip and let's set our bulk blur or blur radius to the maximum amount that we want it. So I'll leave it at about 165. That's usually what I see with about a 50 mm lens. It looks like this big. And then let's click the animate stopwatch icon to create some keyframes. 
So I'll expand this layer so you can see what's going on. Under the effects and camera lens, you can see we've created a keyframe right here. Next, let's go over, I'll say about five seconds, a real slow and smooth focus pull will create. And let's set the blur radius all the way back down to zero now. So now from zero to five seconds, it's slowly going to go from that high blur to zero radius, which is going to replicate a smooth focus pull that you might see in camera. And that's a great way to introduce a clip. You could also place text at the beginning of these areas because it's a good way to add a title with a blurry background and then fade the title out. But you can see there's tons of possibilities for you to get that little bit of extra flexibility you didn't capture the bokeh in camera. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then make sure you leave a like on it below. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.